there's a, there's a lot of topics that, that need to be discussed here. I, I want to start with the, um, the, the term there in, in Isaiah 45, or 45, 18. I think this is really important, and I'm going to bring it up on my screen here so that everybody can see that. I want you. I want us to go through this together, because this passage has all three verbs that are used in relation to to um, creation. Doug, could you uh, mute your microphone, buddy? Thanks. Sure. So what we have here is we have the word bore. For thus says the Lord, who created bore. This is the word to to create. It's the word bara. It's the same word. This is actually the participle form of it. And it can also mean the, the one who is the creator. Uh, it's another way you could translate that, or uh, either way, you know, the, the creator of the heavens or the one who created uh, is really not the the correct grammatical form that's being used in the New King James. But we'll let that slide. Uh, and it says, "Who formed the word Yatsa?" We see that also in Genesis chapter one, the earth, and he made it. So here you're, you're making this argument about the, the difference between the, the terms bara and asa. Bara means the initiation of something new. That's really the, 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 the force of it. This idea that it's the creation ex nihilo, uh, though it, it's possible, it's, it's, not, it's not clearly, it's not technically what it actually means. Because David uses the same word, created me a clean heart. Right? So he's talking about something, the initiation of something new. And it's uh, this idea of newness can only be used of God. This is a word that is only used where God is a subject. Man is never uh, said to bara something or to bore something. It's always God who can use this verb. Man never uses this verb. But God does use the word asa. And here we see it laid out very clearly. So here we have uh, these words that who created the heavens, who he created those. And who formed the earth and made it. So notice uh, here we have the word ose or the word asa. So he makes the earth. But then look, he says, who did not create it in vain. And this is the bracha is actually talking about the earth. Because the word earth in Hebrew, in Hebrew is feminine. And here we have the uh, objective suffix that's being used here, the, the hey tells us that the thing that he didn't create in vain is talking about the earth. So he made it, and he created it, and he formed it. They're all talking about the earth here, because we see that it's got this feminine singular objective suffix that's being, uh, that's being brought up here. So he creates the heavens, and then he says that he formed the earth, he made the earth, he made it, osa. So this is, this is ose, it's actually oh, the word osa, uh, and it's, it's talking about he made it. He made the earth. So he made it. He formed it. He created it. And then again, he formed it. So each of these is talking about the, what happened in the earth. So to say that, that first he created it like you know a, a gazillion years ago or whatever, and then he later remade it because of the word asa, just doesn't hold any water. Uh, it, 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 this verse actually does just the opposite of what you'd like it to do. This verse proves that God did all three actions at the same time. He did all three at the same time. And what's even more is that we have bara uh, and asa. And notice in Exodus 20:11, God says, For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. It doesn't say six days plus, you know, uh, you know, a billion years where Satan was on ice for a while. It just doesn't say that. So these arguments that are being used are really fallacious. Uh, you, you know, I, I, I've heard these arguments. They don't stack up in the Hebrew. They don't make uh, the sense that you'd like them to make. And uh, unfortunately, uh, we just we can't. I mean, they're just not there. So a few other things here. Um, uh, you know, whether or not the, the King James 11 guys had a, a young earth creation bias, well, uh, can you think of any ancient source that believed in the ruin restoration theory? I can't think of anybody. There's nobody that held to that. In fact, actually, I have one, I have one quote 
um, that okay. did. But go ahead, go ahead and well, finish your point, though. I mean, uh, if if you look at if you look at the ancient sources, I'm not talking a recent source, but if you look at the ancient sources, every one of them, with maybe the exception of Origin, but everybody else, uh, we're talking uh, pre uh, Antonician uh, Church Fathers, and of course the Jews, they all believed that God did it in six literal days. There's no getting around that. They all believed it was done in six literal days and that it wasn't done over millions or billions or that God somehow destroyed and then he recreated. So that that doesn't work either. Um, Doug, just to clarify, go for um, it. I, yeah. I do agree that God um, created you know, six 24-hour periods. Um, however, you know, it, it gets into looking at each of the items um, and would suggest that the the item you know that uh, made is perhaps more appropriate except in the context of the creation of animals creation of uh, human beings uh, many would, of the in a creation uh, features appear to be made as in terms of appointed their role in uh, in the creation well what would you do with Exodus 2011 and, and 31 where it says that in six days, God made everything. Yeah, well, I, I think that the, the, the sources that I have read believe, once again, that the distinction has to be drawn between the issue of, of creating to begin with versus appointing each of the items to a specific role uh, in the recreation of the, uh, the heaven and the earth. What do you do with the biblical source, though? For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rest on the seventh. Uh, well, I, I think we, you know, to, to, to answer it, I have to probably go look at each of the points. Um, well, this but, is the point. I mean, this is the no, point. Well, you know, yeah. God says that he made it, he made everything, the heavens and the earth. That's what we have in Genesis 1-1, right? God made the heavens and the earth. So here where it says that God made the heavens and the earth and everything... And he says this twice. I will, I will grant you that that verse, taken uh, by itself, tends to convey that. That is my sense. It does tend to convey that. So why would you read it differently? Because it's not the only, ver the only verse in the Bible. Well, which other verses are there? Well, there's the verses we've just discussed. There will be verses in the New Testament we'll talk about a bit later. Okay. Well, scripture uh, interprets scripture. You agree because yes. you're a Reformation, Absolutely you're a Reformation, right. Reformation theologian, as I. So we uh, we understand all of the scripture, uh, or a particular scripture in light of all of the scripture. Right. I, I wouldn't call myself a Reformationist, but that's another well, issue. Well, uh, uh, <laughs> it's okay. I'll let it go. I, I, I won't. I, I, I won't make call an issue. you a. I won't call you a reform theologian. Okay. Like, thank you. Thank you. Uh, that, that's fine. Well, you know, the, the other thing is the word became, you know, became versus was. Uh, you know, the word haya, uh, it, the, the basic meaning is is was. That's the basic meaning. Uh, can it be used transitively to mean became? Well, yes, it can. There are definitely times. But you could, you could equally translate those places as was, even to say that Adam was a living being, okay? Uh, now, in English, because we have two different words to choose from, we have to make this decision. We have to make this judgment call. But Hebrew doesn't think that way. Hebrew is not all concerned about, well, is it was or became. I mean, when I was studying Hebrew, I kept thinking, where is the word for became? And it just it isn't there. It doesn't exist. Because they're so not thinking context. in those terms. It's context. But, sure. But, but they're not even well, thinking. As I, but as I mentioned to you, there are 134 places in the King James, in which the word Hayach is translated became, and specifically, uh, if we use the example of Lot's wife, who became a, uh, a pillar of salt, obviously she wasn't, and then she was, so she became, and so the point is, is that it can be translated became, and uh, again, it requires context. Right, but you're, you're, you're basing most of your argument on a very, very subtle and subjective difference. I mean, so in, in all those places that you're talking about, you could also substitute the word was, and it could work. I mean, for well, example... In you, know, in, you know Hebrew better than I, but my sense is the example I've just given you, it would not convey 
the, the, the meaning with the same precision as the word as as using the word became. Just to let you guys know, you have uh, five minutes left for uh, for this section. Well, let me let me just make one comment. Um, we might agree or disagree on that. Let me make one comment because I thought it was interesting. Uh, you said that there is no example. Uh, Custance, uh, Arthur Custance, who is sort of the uh, champion uh, of the ruin restoration theory. Um, Finnis Dake here is quoting Custis. He says that Custis notes that the earliest Aramaic translation of the Old Testament, the Targum of Onkelos, uh -huh. gives the following uh, interpretation. I assume that's 200, 300 BC, I'm not sure. Yeah, um, earliest, yeah. somewhat, yep, earliest Aramaic translation of the Old Testament. Uh, he gives the following interpretation of Genesis 1 2. Uh, and the earth was laid waste. So he says this rendering c clearly indicates that the Jewish scholars compiling one of the first translations of the scriptures believed something happened between the first two verses of Genesis 1, which resulted in the destruction of the original creation. I've read, but I can't cite it now, certainly uh, some of the, uh, the, the old uh, rabbis talked in terms of God creating, having several creations, and he was sort of yeah. unhappy with a creation until he finally settled on the creation that we currently have. I'm right. not so much necessarily saying I agree with that, but I think there is example where right. well, um, you know, look, even, custom, even custom, pre, pre uh, New Testament that yeah, there, there, but, was, there were Jews that believed this. Custis is taking the liberty here. He's taking a liberty. Uh, you know, you, anybody can go and look this up. And uh, it's it's readily available online. It's in Bible software. It says, "And the earth was waste and empty, and darkness was upon the face of the, the abyss." So mm -hmm. he he's stretching things. Uh, I've looked through his stuff. I've looked at his supposed uh, interpretation of the Hebrew. I, I'm less than impressed. Uh, I, I I respect him as a person. I think he means well, but. I just or meant not, well. You know, yeah, I'm sure he meant well. I, 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 it's yeah. nothing to do with his character, you know. Of course, uh, you know, just like I don't have any issues with your character. I think you mean well as also. But the, the the issue really comes down to the Hebrew, because if we go back to the other Targumim, which uh, if we look at the Targum of Palestine, or also known as the Targum of Jonathan. Uh, it, it says, and the earth was vacancy and desolation, solitary of the sons of men, and void of every animal, and darkness was upon the face of the abyss. So it, it's it's not saying that God recreated or that he you know he he's you know he, that he he nixed his first one and now he's starting over. It doesn't say that. So that's the trouble. So these are not going to help. If we even look at the Jerusalem Targum, it says, and the earth was vacancy and desolation. Now again. The word that's being supplied here is just as much of a judgment call on the part of the English translator uh, as you have in, in the Hebrew to English translation. So, you know, I we think, would I agree think, that it is a judgment. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> maybe no not a judgment call. Well, uh, but well, see, that's but, the position that we take is that it is a judgment. There, there was a judgment that had occurred, and no, I, um, that that's why the world was in the state that. Uh, as we'll talk later about Second Peter, the world that then was, uh, that is what I believe uh, all of these scholars uh, that believe in the ruin and restoration theory, what they hold to is that it was a result of, uh, of satanic rebellion. Right. Uh, We're getting ahead of and, ourselves. And, yeah. No, but I'm We're just really saying that's the context. Ourselves. Uh, That's the I, context. Yes, I understand that. I appreciate that. Let me let me just take you down uh, a grammatical road here. This is this is kind of important. You so, guys have uh, sorry. You guys have one minute left. Okay, I want to I want to show you something in in the Hebrew because uh, one minute. Well, uh, it's our debate. Can we just change it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have to stick to all of the. All oh of the, no, we have to so stick many good to. Things. I'm I afraid know. the finer points of grammar may be lost on me anyway, Doug. Well, but they're incredibly important. I mean, take a are. look here. Look, take a look. So in the past tense in Hebrew, as I said, you started with a simple past, okay? So that's the word bara. Then we have this parenthetical statement in verse 2. Now the earth was without form of void. And then it's followed by what's called a sequential past tense. So the rest of the chapter is following that model. 
It's Vayikra, Vayomer, Vayas, Vayikra, Vayomer. So what that's telling us is that this uh, chapter one is one contiguous flow of a story. There's no break. The only there's a pause to give you some background information about what the Earth is, but that's it. It's not it's not telling you that there's millions and billions of years that are somehow stuck in there. Uh, that's not at all what's what's going on in the grammar. The grammar is saying you have a simple past tense, verse one. You have a parenthetical issue, verse two, because give me some clarification as to what the earth really means here. And then verse three picks up the story. And we find that throughout Hebrew grammar and throughout the Hebrew Bible, that you have a simple past tense, and then you go on with what's called a, a sequential past tense. And where needed, you'll have a parenthetical statement. And as, as I've already pointed out, this parenthetical statement is, is being used many places. This is pointed out by Juan Marocca. These, this is uh, the, um, you know, the definitive grammar book. Uh, and, and just let me, I'll, you know, Strong's is not. Uh, nobody uses Strong's in the, in the Hebrew community, uh, in the, the academic community. But he says, on the other hand, a nominal or verbal clause with Vav forms a sort of parenthesis and precedes the main clause. So he says, now Abraham was very rich. Now the young girl was very beautiful. Now Nineveh was an enormous city. Now the eyes of Israel were heavy because of old age. And on and on it goes. Say, and this is using that same phraseology of where you have the, the word and followed by the uh, subject, that is the noun, and then followed by the verb. Hebrew grammar says, no, the verb should come first. But when you put the noun first or the subject first, you're, put, you're creating a parenthetical statement. So that cannot be ignored in this discussion. It, it, the grammar is everything here. And, uh, you know, these other guys, they're, you know, Custance, et cetera, they're not looking at the grammar carefully. They're, they're, draw, they're well, I, drawing I, at straws. I can't defend Custance too well because he's passed on many years ago. But, uh, but my sense is certainly he's regarded as a, uh, an expert in Hebrew grammar. So, um, well, by, you know, by the people that could, he's, he's regarded well, as such by the people that like his theory. I mean, that's, well, no, that's who thinks that he's an expert. I, I could impugn your experts as well, but uh, I didn't study it, uh, prep that to do that. So, well, I but the Hebrew, that, well, look, the Hebrew, mm -hmm. the Hebrew experts uh, appreciate these, these experts. I mean, Gesenius is, mm -hmm. uh, he, he's not contested at all. Uh, Juan Morocco, okay. these guys as, as grammar experts, they're not contested. Right. I mean, everybody right. who studies biblical Hebrew says, yes, these are the guys. These are the main dudes. So there's no okay. question that, that these guys are in the know. Uh, you know, again, Custance, intelligent fellow, there's no, no doubt about that. But he, he, I, I would argue he's missing the main point, and that is you have to look at the grammar. And I don't know if there's any point in going further. I mean, we can. Because there's also scientific arguments we can certainly look at. I'm happy to discuss, but you have to go back and look at the grammar. So uh, under, under, I understand uh, your perspective, and and uh, the grammar is not unimportant by any means. Um, I would say let's uh, let's agree that we both I think have made some good points, and we should move on. Um, I think most listeners would agree that with you that the grammar is important, but it's not the only issue. It's the central issue. I mean, the grammar. Look, if, okay. what, are we, what are we basing our theology on if it's not the grammar? I, I think it's uh, it's based upon the scripture ac across the board, and not just um, the Hebrew grammar that you're referring to in just these verses. Now, I've given you, I've given you, as I said, 134 examples. Um, in the King James, where Hayach was translated, became, and uh, and so uh, you know, with some clear examples as to why it is more meaningful to use that term. So, so Mr. Moderator, I think I move that we move on. Well, I decided to be nice and give you guys an extra five minutes, <laughs> but. Uh,